An orthosis or orthotic is a device that can be made from a variety of materials that, when applied to any body part, act to stabilize or immobilize a body part, prevent or correct deformity, protect against injury, promote healing, and or assist with function. A splint is a type of orthotic that can be made from a variety of materials, including wood, aluminum, and thermoplastics. A splint can be applied to any body part and is used to partially or totally immobilize a body part in order to restore function. In human medicine, splints are often made using low temperature thermoplastics. Low temperature thermoplastics, or LTT, are rubber or plastic materials that soften when heated in warm water, are moldable when soft, harden when cooled, and once cool, retain the molded, hardened shape. There are several splinting applications commonly used in veterinary medicine. Splinting can be used to immobilize a limb and or a joint after surgery, stabilize elbow or shoulder joints following subluxations or luxations, stabilize carpal or tarsal joints following subluxations or luxations, support the carpus following hyperextension, support limbs following nerve injuries such as radial, sciatic, or brachial plexus injuries and paralysis. Correct limb deformities. To make a custom splint, you will need a sheet of low temperature thermoplastic, an electric heating pan, some strapping material, and some other common items found in most veterinary clinics. A heat gun is also helpful for spot heating and molding, but is not required. Low temperature thermoplastics vary in flexibility, drapeability, rigidity, memory, and texture. Also, they come in a variety of thicknesses and colors. Some thermoplastics are perforated to allow airflow and breathability. Perforated thermoplastics are also lighter in weight. The materials that you will need include a sheet of low temperature thermoplastic. The Marquis Easy brand is well suited for both large and small animals and is available through Jorgensen Laboratories Incorporated at 1-800-525-5614. An electric heating pan to heat water. Once the water is hot, you can immerse the thermoplastic sheet until it becomes soft and moldable. A plastic pan liner is ideal since it will prevent the thermoplastic from sticking to the bottom of the heating pan. A few sheets of paper towels work well to trace the shape of the animal's limb to make the splinting pattern. A magic marker and a waterproof marker or wax pencil is used to trace the shape of the limb and then to draw the cut paper pattern onto the thermoplastic. A cotton stocking is used to protect the animal when molding the warm thermoplastic around the limb. Tongs are used to remove the heated material from the hot water. Scissors are used to cut the pattern from the paper towel and to cut the softened thermoplastic. An ace bandage is useful for holding the thermoplastic in place on the animal's limb until it hardens. A cotton towel is used to dry the thermoplastic once it is removed from the hot water. Strapping material, available through Jorgensen Laboratories, is used to fasten the splint to the animal's limb. Padding material, also available through Jorgensen Laboratories, is sometimes used to protect bony prominences or delicate skin areas. A heat gun can be used as the final step to soften and smooth the edges of the splint. The full Palmer Carpal Support Splint. The function of this splint is to maintain the distal limb in a functional position, immobilize the carpus, metacarpals, and phalanges, support and stabilize carpal, metacarpal, and phalangeal joints, and protect healing structures 
and prevent undue stress. The patient that we use as an example is a female greyhound, age 9, with right carpal laxity resulting from a fall. The pattern is most easily made when the animal is lying down. Place a few sheets of paper towel under the animal's limb. With a magic marker, trace the shape of the limb. The tracing should go up about two-thirds the length of the ulna and should be made wide enough to go about half of the circumference of the limb. Make sure that the distal part of the pattern is large enough to accommodate the animal's foot, allowing enough room for the toes to abduct when the animal bears weight on that foot. Also, an extra inch or more of border should be left around the nails so that the edge of the splint can be curled up. This will prevent dirt and debris from getting into the splint. On each side of the paper pattern, mark the carpal joint and the proximal end of the main foot pad. Also, mark each side and the ends of the nails. After you have finished tracing your pattern and marking the specified locations, Use scissors to cut out the pattern. The cutout notches on each side of the digits will allow you to curl up the end of the splint without bunching excess material. Cut out a notch at each of the marked locations so that the thermoplastic material can be molded around the angles of the limb without bunching. After you have cut out the pattern, check it against the animal's limb to ensure that the length, width, and angle notches are correct. Make sure that the distal part of the pattern is large enough to accommodate the animal's foot. Using a waterproof marker or wax pencil, trace the pattern onto the thermoplastic sheet. Preheat the electric heating pan with about 2 inches of water. Bring the water to just under the boiling point, about 200 degrees. Place the thermoplastic material into the hot water. Using tongs, frequently check the pliability of the material and remove it when soft. Softening should take about one to three minutes. Place the material flat on a cotton towel and pat dry if necessary. Make sure that you don't fold the material since the softened material can stick to itself. When the material is soft, use scissors to cut out the rough pattern. While cutting, allow the bulk of the material to rest on the towel to prevent the material from stretching and losing its shape. If the material becomes rigid, reheat part or all of the material in the water as needed to re-soften it. Cut the final pattern from the freshly softened material. At this point, it is a good idea to round all of the corners of the splint to prevent potential irritation of the animal's skin. When the splint pattern is complete, reheat the cut thermoplastic in the hot water. While the splint is heating, slip a cotton stocking onto the animal's limb to protect it from the hot splinting material. When the splint is soft and pliable, remove it from the hot water and place it flat on a cotton towel. Pat it dry, then use the towel to transfer the splint to the animal. Place the palmer side of the animal's limb onto the soft splint, then wrap the limb with the splint. Once the splint is in place, start proximally and wrap an ace bandage around the splint to just above the carpus. To free your hands, you can tuck the remainder of the bandage into itself so that it remains secure. Since this is a functional splint to assist with mobility, it's best to form the foot portion of the splint with the animal in standing. If this is a large animal, you may require some assistance to help the animal to stand up. While the animal is standing, use your hands to mold the distal part of the splint around the foot. Hold the animal and the splint in place until the splint material cools and hardens. This should take less than a minute. Once the splint has hardened, lay the animal back down. At this point, the ace bandage can be removed. While the splint is on the animal, mark any areas of excess material that will need to be trimmed. 
Carefully remove the splint and the cotton stocking. As you can see, the splint has retained its shape. The splint draped smoothly over the animal's limb and contoured to its shape, thereby limiting pressure areas. To trim the excess material, use the hot water to heat just the edges that need trimming. Be careful reheating too much of the splint since you risk losing the shape of the splint. Dry the splint, then trim along your marks. Also, you can heat the edges of the top of the splint so you can round the corners and get rid of any sharp ends. At the same time, you can use your fingers to smooth and curl away any sharp edges along the length of the splint. Running the splint under cold water will help speed the cooling and hardening process. At the notch conjunctions, make sure that the two ends of the splint material stick together. Thermoplastic adheres to itself when hot, so reheat and reseal any notch junctions that you feel are loose or unstable. A heat gun is often used to soften the splint at precise points. You can also use a heat gun to soften small, tight areas such as corners. The heat gun is useful any time you have an area that is too oddly shaped or too small to heat easily in hot water. When using a heat gun, it is important to keep the splint material moving over the heat so that one area doesn't get too hot while even the surrounding areas cool. Also, you can turn the splint over and heat it from the inside. If the area that you are trying to heat is very small, use the tongs to hold the splint to avoid burning your fingers. The next step is to attach the straps. Attach the strapping material proximally and distally to the carpus. Another strap can be used over the foot area if required. Determine the length of the space that you want to cover with the strapping material. Then trim it and round the edges so there are no sharp corners. In order to increase the adhesive quality of the strapping material, use the heat gun to heat both the adhesive side of the strap and the area on the splint where it is going to be applied. Be careful not to overheat the strapping material or the splint since both can melt with excessive heat. When both the strap and the splint are hot, apply the strap to the splint. Cut the strap to fit. The strap should cover the circumference of the limb with a little extra to ensure that the strap overlaps. Check the fit on the animal's limb. Wrap the straps around the animal's limb, trim as needed, and round the corners. If needed, padding can be added at this point. Padding is suggested for the following. The paw, areas of decreased skin integrity, and areas where there is the potential for rubbing, chafing, or other discomfort. Thin, conforming padding that has an adhesive back is recommended. Cut small pieces of padding and adhere them inside the splint at places that may potentially rub or apply pressure. Note that if the splint is well made and custom fit to the animal, padding is not needed and generally not recommended. However, if you plan to use padding inside the splint, always plan for extra room when tracing the pattern. Finally, place the splint on the animal and check for any final adjustments.